Hello children, warm welcome to English class. Yesterday, we had completed up to the 10th paragraph. So there, we have seen two experiments which were conducted by Louis Pasteur. So in the previous paragraph, we came to know that Louis Pasteur experimented with the help of soup to find out to find out that uh, the uh, there is fresh air and the air which is stale the, the air which is completely filled with dust and germs right so now in the 11th paragraph nowadays we pay a great deal of attention to pure air open windows freedom from dust, garden cities. Pasture was one of the first to show how necessary all these are if we are to fight against germs and disease. So nowadays we try to get the fresh air. So that is why we go to the hill stations because already Louis Pasteur with his experiment he, he came to know that the air which is in the our highest mountain place is very pure so that we wish to go we wish to visit those hill stations we want pure air we want open windows and we want freedom from dust even we want to have garden cities so who was the first one to find it out? He was Louis Pasteur. Another very useful discovery of Pasteur's while he was working in Paris was the process which we now call after him Pasteurization. Dear children, you have heard about Pasteurization and that is founded by Louis Pasteur. So that is, an, uh, that is an another useful discovery which is discovered by Pasteur uh, when he was working in Paris, he found it. Some French wine growers were troubled by a germ which had turned their wine sour. Who had come to him? Some French wine growers. They were from France and those wine growers had come to Louis Pasteur to get the uh, problem solved. So what was the problem? They were troubled by a germ which had turned their wine sour. Their wine was becoming sour because of some germs. They did not come to know the solu solution. So that is why they, uh, they came to Louis Pasteur and uh, they asked for a solution. Pasteur showed that by heating the wine or milk or whatever it might be to a temperature of 50 or 60 degrees centigrade, the germs were made harmless. How were the germs made harmless? The germs were made harmless by boiling it to the temperature of 50 or 60 degree. 60 degree centigrade. The germs were made harmless. Pasteurized milk is milk which has been treated in this way and then sealed to prevent sealed to prevent more germs from entering. So uh, the milk what you get at home the pasteurized milk that too will be heated to the temperature of 50 to 60 degree and then that will be packed 
so what happens there the germs will be made harmless so those harmless germs will not harm you or the milk whatever you boil there right so pasteurized milk is the milk which has been created in this way and thereafter what do they do they seal it they pack it so that the other germs will be prevented by entering right so that will be prevented that will be stopped the germs will not enter later after after the packing so this is the process of pasteurization so kindly underline pasture showed that by heating the wine or milk or whatever it might be so whatever it might be my you know, no need of having only milk or only wine or something else whatever it might be so what you should do you have to boil it to the temperature so whatever it might be to a temperature of 50 or 60 degree 50 or 60 degrees centigrade the germs were made harmless how can you make the germs harmless by heating it to the degree of 50 to 60 degree right so and then uh, pasteurized milk uh, pasteurized milk is milk which has been treated in this way so in this way it will be treated and then sealed to prevent more uh, prevent more germs from entering so other germs should not enter the milk what you have boiled so after boiling if you keep it like that only other germs may enter so that is why you have to seal it or you have to pack it so this is the process of pasteurization let us move on to 13 paragraph louis pasteur was what we should call an all-round scientist what was he he was an all-rounder all the research which he did in his laboratories was meant to help his fellow human beings what was his intention his intention was to help the fellow human beings it would be impossible to imagine pasture experimenting with explosives or poison gas the children we, we must thank god because he was not a person who is going to find some explosives or some poison gas he helped the people to cure the disease not to not to create the disease so we have to thankful to god and that shows his kindness and uh, the kind hearted person's feelings can be understood over here so that was louis pasteur Pasteur founded the branch of science called bacteriology. Children, underline this sentence. So, what did he found? He founded the branch of science called bacteriology. Who is the founder of bacteriology? Louis Pasteur is the founder of bacteriology or the study of bacteria, study bacteria um, bacteriology or the study of bacteria and he showed what a wide range it had by studying the bacteria in all sorts of different activities by conducting different activities he found um, uh, he showed what the, a wide range it had it had really a wide range the study of bacteria or bacteriology has got the wide range so he proved by uh, by conducting so many activities for for three years he spent all his time and energy in tracking down the cause of a disease which had ruined the silkworm industry silkworm industry was having the problem of uh, some germs so some germs had created the problem to the people who were working in silkworm industry he began to believe that most if not all not all the bacteria some infectious diseases were due to certain bacteria means what was the cause behind some disease bacteria bacteria were the cause behind some disease that he found if they got into blood so this was the calculation in the mind of louis pasteur he if, he, if they got into the blood, if those bacteria got into the blood, what would have happened? 
multiplied there what happens if bacteria enters our blood there it multiplies multiplies and uh, several bacteria will will totally occupy our body there and caused disease he came to know this that bacteria was one of the reasons for this some bacteria were creating some bacteria were creating the problem over here and they were making the person to be deceased many other 15 paragraph many other men were working and experimenting against those bacteria which were the enemies of man and which were invisible but present everywhere and always ready to attack what the writer says over here many other men were working not only louis pasteur there were many other persons who were working and experimenting against what against those bacteria which were creating trouble which were the enemies of the man and which were invisible were they visible to the people no they were invisible they were not they, they were not the people were not able to see it the but present everywhere weren't they present everywhere yes they were present everywhere in all the place and always ready to attack those bacteria were always ready to attack dr jenner in england had already discovered vaccination for smallpox who had discovered the vaccination for smallpox dr jenner you have heard about him so dr jenner in england where did he find it in england had already discovered he had discovered dr jenner had already discovered uh, the vaccination for smallpox but so underline the word vaccination there but inoculation underline this also inoculation vaccination inoculation i will tell you the difference in between vaccination and inoculation but inoculation against other diseases had not yet started only vaccination was done but inoculation was not yet started so what is the concept well, what the concept uh, behind vaccination and inoculation what is mean by vaccination and inoculation actually vaccination means uh, introducing live organisms into the body to generate immunity is vaccination what is vaccination uh, vaccination is the process through which live organism live organisms will be introduced into the body to generate immunity to whose body the person who is deceased to his body to generate immunity to generate immunity what will be introduced the live organism will be introduced so that is vaccination i hope you have understood vaccination you would have heard this process in science classes in the previous year, years or this year uh, so that, that is the process of vaccination now uh, second one the second concept is inoculation what is mean by inoculation what is the difference in between vaccination and inoculation actually inoculation is the process so here uh, it is said like this introduction of weak forms of germs what will be introduced to the body of the deceased person the weak forms weak forms will be introduced so introduction of weak forms of germs into the body to produce immunity so when there is no immunity to produce immunity what will be uh, introduced to the body of the deceased person weak forms of the same germs so remember the weak forms of the same germs will be introduced to the body to create or to enhance or to produce immunity to make the body immune the weak forms of the germs will be introduced to the body of the deceased person that is inoculation so in vaccination what will be introduced to the body uh, live organisms will be introduced and in inoculation the weak forms of the germs will be introduced to the body so this is the difference if you have any confusion you can raise your hand there
so i'll just continue if you have any doubts there just you raise your hand okay uh, so this is about vaccination and inoculation dr jenner discovered vaccination and who discovered inoculation that is louis pasteur now see this see this paragraph number 16 pasteur was trying to discover a cure for a, for the terrible disease called anthrax what was he trying to discover he was trying to discover a cure for the terrible disease you have heard about anthrax so he wanted to find a cure for the terrible disease anthrax which men sometimes get from infected shaving brushes usually shaving brushes will be prepared uh, uh, by what by the hair of some animals so when uh, when the men use those shaving brushes they were getting anthrax and which was attacking cows and sheep in france and killing them off very quickly what was killing them off very quickly anthrax anthrax was the reason he found out first of all that a cow could not have anthrax twice underline this who found out louis pasteur found out for the first time that a cow could not have anthrax twice why it is then he began to wonder whether it would not be possible to make a cow and even a man so when cow is getting recovered when cow is not getting anthrax for the second time why can't it is possible with the man just a little ill with anthrax even a man just a little ill with anthrax so that they might not get it again if the one who is suffering the man uh, if the man is suffering from anthrax if he gets the same disease once again if he gets uh, if he becomes little ill because of that anthrax once again what would happen he would be saved so that was just um, just a calculation which was going on in the mind of louis pasteur perhaps this could be done by giving the cows or sheep very weak old germs to make them safe or immune for the future to make them immune for the future what is to be done uh, this could be done what could be done giving the cows or sheep very weak old forms or uh, very weak old germs to make them safe or immune for the future what is to be given the weak old forms are to be given to the same body so that the animal or the man or the woman that means the human beings will be saved one can imagine how dangerous this idea of giving people germs must have seemed in those days even now also Mm, we too get scared to hear this right oh already i have got an uh, got an anthrax and um, doctor is going to give me the weak forms of anthrax i may get scared and even you too but pasteur proved that with an experiment many sense even the people also they were scared to hear this idea to, to come to know about this idea many scientists who were angry about it they did not get agreed with the opinion of louis pasteur but they agreed to allow pasteur to prove it by a public experiment yes the scientists have to do some experiment so that the people will get agree with their opinion if not they don't get agree the same thing was done over here they gave an opportunity to louis pasteur to prove his idea with an experiment did he do that yes he did it let us see 17 paragraph so pasteur collected some sheep goats and cows and divided them into two lots what did louis pasteur do he took two 
two lots some sheep goats and cows first lot so there were 24 that means two dozen were there in one lot 24 animals were there so what were what was there there were sheep what were there there were sheep cows and goats and even in the second lot there were 24 animals again so what were, what were there sheep cows and goats so he took two lots first lot there were 24 animals and then in the second lot there were 24 animals what was what were there there were sheep cows and goats even in the second lot he divided them into two to one lot he gave injections of weak anthrax germs that is what we call as inoculation so here injected with weak weak anthrax germs Weak anthrax germs were injected to the first lot. And what about the second lot? The other lot was left alone. The other lot was not injected by the, by the weak forms of anthrax germs. Then, on a certain day, all the animals were injected with the most deadly anthrax germs that could be produced. So what happened? All the animals. Then on a certain day, all the animals were injected with the most deadly anthrax germs. All these animals were uh, injected with that deadly disease, um, that is the germs of anthrax. That could, that could be produced. So which produces anthrax in them. On the third day, after the experiment, a crowd of people gathered round the sheds. Now the people were very curious. The people were very curious and they were ready to put some, they were, they wanted to kill this Louis Pasteur and they, they were, they were thinking that his experiment will become failed. It will be failed and they will beat him and they will kill him. So that was their thinking and they were ready and they were very eager there. They were present there around this shit. A crowd of people gathered round the sheds to see what had happened to the animals. They were curious to see the animals. Pasture, even though he was so sure of himself, that says that he was so confident. He was very confident that these animals will be saved. Those who have got weak forms of germs, of anthrax, must have felt nervous. But still, even he was confident, he was nervous to see the people there. All the two dozen of and dozen animals that had first been protected by the weak germs were perfectly well. Okay. Tested okay. The first lot was saved because of weak forms of germs of anthrax. But what about the second lot? All the two dozen animals that had first been protected by the weak germs were perfectly well. They were perfectly well. There was no problem with them. The deadly injection had done them no harm at all. Second time, the injection what was given by Louis Pasteur did not harm them because they had weak germs of anthrax. So they were very immune. That did not create any problem in them. Of, uh, of the other two dozen animals, what about the other two dozen animals? 22 were dead. 22 were dead. And what about the remaining two? 
The other two were dying, they were waiting to die. So sad. And they were in the position to die. When the news spread that Pasteur, was, Pasteur had discovered a cure for anthrax, hundreds of people wrote to him for supplies of vaccine or weak germs. And he had to turn his laboratory into a kind of small germ factory. His lab, his laboratory was turned into a small germ factory after this experiment. The people came to know that, the people realized that the weak forms will create immunity. That is why many people, they wrote letters to him and they asked him to supply weak germs, weak, weak form of germs of the diseases. So his, he, he turned his laboratory into a small germ factory. Let us continue. So Pasteur received many honors from the French government and in 1881 he came to a big medical congress in London. Congress in the sense meeting, a big meeting it is. He attended the big meeting in London. So that was with regard to medical issues. When he walked down the hall, when Louis Pasteur walked down the hall, there was a storm of applause. The people were clapping. He didn't come to know what's going on there. He looked round. He simply looked round. Hey, people are clapping. For whom? He didn't understand. For whom it was? It was for Louis Pasteur. He looked round thinking that the cheers must be for some royal person. Yeah, when, when, an, when a royal person enters, then the people will clap. But not for simple people, no, common people. So he thought like that. He thought that the, the applause was for some royal person. For Pasteur could hardly believe. He was unable to believe that for whom it was. The applause was meant for him. It was for Louis Pasteur. The people applauded for Louis Pasteur for his greatest, for the greatest achievement. One of his last experiments was in connection with the terrible disease which attacks a person who is bitten by a dog with rabies. A mad dog, as we call it. We call it as a mad dog. Hmm? One of his last experiments. This was one of the last experiments of Louis Pasteur. It was in connection with the terrible disease. It was connected to the disease rabies, which attacks a person. How does it attack? It attacks a person who is bitten by a dog with rabies. When a dog with rabies bites, we will be diseased with that rabies, right? We will uh, become the patient of rabies. Uh, a mad dog, as well as we call it. We call it as a mad dog. So when, a, when, when the dog gets rabies, we, we say that uh, that's a mad dog. Pasteur had grown very sure about the power of inoculation. Pasteur, he was very confident about his experiment about in inoculation. So that is why he was so confident. And he decided to try out the same idea. The same idea he thought to uh, apply over here in this problem. One, um, sorry, the same idea in cases of rabies. At that time, nearly everyone died who was bitten by a diseased dog. See how dangerous it was on that time. At that time, it was so dangerous. So many people were died because of rabies. In 1885, Pasteur made his first experiment on a young Alsatian boy. Don't get confused. 
mm, some are, some might be laughing at home that alsatian boy like alsatian dog no 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 alsatian boy in the sense no? the boy who was living in alsace the name of the place is alsace so that is why the writer has called him as alsatian boy who came to him in paris covered with bites from a mad dog the poor the boy had come over there who was completely bitten by a mad dog what we call actually in the scientific term it is rabies the dog with rabies the boy's mother told the pasteur who had brought him there his mother had brought him there she told to pasteur she told to pasteur anurag what happened anurag what happened The boy's mother told Pasha, what did she say? If you can cure animals, you can cure my son. Children, underline this statement. If you can cure animals, you can cure my son. Who said this to whom? The boy's mother said this to Louis Pasha. So what did she say? She said that if he could cure animals, because she had come to know that he had cured the animals who were suffering from anthrax. So that is why she was so confident and she had faith in him. So that's why she said that uh, if he could cure animals, he could cure her son. When Louis Pasteur was in a condition to save animals, he could save her son too. That was the greatest belief which she had in Louis Pasteur. She believed him. So, Pasteur inoculated him with some weak rabies germs. See, um, the, the germs must be of the same disease, not of some other disease. So, that is why he took the weak forms of rabies only. In anthrax, in the experiment of anthrax, he took the weak forms of anthrax. Here, in the, um, uh, in the experiment of rabies, he took some weak forms of rabies. And the boy recovered. Great! That was the great. The, that was the greatest miracle, which we could say. And this experiment was done by Louis Pasteur and was very successful in his experiment. Although Dr. Jenna had already discovered how to vaccinate against smallpox, he did not really understand about bacteria. Dr. Jenna discovered vaccination but he didn't come to know the clear picture of bacteria but it was done by Louis Pasteur. Pasteur after giving his life to the study was able to prove the value of inoculation and to find out ways of varying it for different diseases. He, uh, he did not do that task with anthra anthrax or rabies. He tried it with many so he tried with only two, but he was believing that it will be implemented in all the other diseases. During the First World War, so that was happened in between 1914 to 1918, the troops going abroad were inoculated. The army was inoculated against such diseases as typhoid and enteric fever. And the very low death rate from these illnesses among the troops, even in unhealthy places, was a great tribute to Pasteur's work. Whose work it was? It was Pasteur's work. And those, um, those soldiers who were, uh, who were going to take part in the war, they were inoculated by the weak forms of germs of uh, typhoid and enteric fever. So wherever they go, they don't. Uh, it is not sure that uh, the place will be healthy or unhealthy, right? So usually such places where they conduct war, where they take part in the war, that may be 
unhealthy so that is why uh, they were inoculated earlier before entering the war place thank god they were saved and the death rate was less pasteur's memory is still honored in the institute pasteur in paris where bacteriology is studied by men of all nations the scientists from all nations go there and study bacteriology at the opening of the institution in 1888 pasteur said now this is very important children so in which year it was opened in 1888 opening of the institution in 1888 who said louis pasteur said what did he say two opposing laws underline this underline the statement two opposing laws seem to me now in contest the one a law of blood and death uh, children here louis pasteur speaks about two laws two laws l a w s the first law is a law of blood and death so uh, in this law what happens opening out each day new methods of destruction only destruction is is in this way in the way of uh, in the or in the law of blood and death death only destruction is there forces nations to be always ready for the battle as the as these words only say blood and death the day should be opened with uh, the new methods of destruction always they have to destruct and the countries have to be ready for the battle all the time so without battle there is no solution that is their opinion so this is the first law and what is the second law what louis pasteur speaks go on underline underlining the other a law of peace work and health so in the second law there is only peace there is only work there is only health apart of that there is nothing no destruction anything no war nothing they are peaceful whose only aim is to deliver man from the disasters whose only aim is to save the man from all the disasters which surrounded him man is mm, surrounded with many disasters and the other has to save him so that is the law of peace work and health so which are the two laws which louis pasteur speaks here vaishnavi we yes sir uh, which are the two laws he speaks here louis pasteur speaks about vaishnavi vaishnavi sir am i audible yeah you are audible go with the answer law of peace work and health no no which is the first law you have to say the two laws the first law is first law is battle no what exactly the term is there violent conquests a law of blood and death is it true okay. yes sir yeah have you underlined that yes yeah please underline that and the second yes, law is second. second line is and second law is second law is the law of peace work and health yeah exactly okay thank you so these are the two laws louis pasteur speaks about the one seeks violent conquest the other relief of mankind the first one is really violent that destructs the life of the human being and even the animals too and, and what about the second law that gives the relief of mankind 
which of these two laws will prevail god god only knows so which one is okay here god only knows but of this we may be sure that science in obeying the law of humanity he supports the second law and he says that science must always support the second law law of humanity law of peace work and health is the law of humanity will always labor to enlarge the frontiers of life that uh, expands the boundaries of human life so that is why we should have we should have uh, we should follow the second law and even the science too should follow the second law this is the opinion of louis pasteur someone who knew pasteur well in his old age described him, described him thus uh, louis pasteur was described louis pasteur was described in his old age like this very with deep lines underline this very with deep lines on his face very he was tired who was tired louis pasteur was tired at the uh, at the last uh, uh, at, in, in his old age he was tired very with deep lines on his face there were deep lines on his face the skin and the beard both white his skin was white and even the beard too was white his hair still thick and nearly always covered with a black cap his hair was always covered with a black cap the broad forehead wrinkled marked with the lines of genius yeah genius people will have those lines on their forehead no those lines were there the mouth slightly drawn by paralysis he was uh, he was suffering from paralysis but full of kindness after even after so many achievements he was not so proud he was humble he was very kind and his kindness was shown in this in this in, in his look just the look the outlook was saying that he was so kind and above all the living thought which still flashes from the eyes beneath the deep shadow of the eyebrows so there was a deep shadow of the eyebrows but still his eyed uh, his eyes were having that sparkle and his eyes were sparkling on pasteur's 70th birthday his jubilee was celebrated almost like a national festival so children please uh, rejoin the meeting the meeting will end just now